Hello, word nerds. Welcome to another episode of The Dictionary. I can feel my voice going just a little bit because this is the fourth episode in a row I am recording. First word for today is agaric. A-G-A-R-I-C. This is a noun from the 15th century. One, the dried fruiting body of a fungus, fomis ophicianalis, S-Y-N, I don't know if that's synonym or syntax or whatever, uh, polyporus officionalis. So there's two names for that fungus. So because I got distracted with that, let me start the definition over again. The dried fruiting body of a fungus formerly used in medicine. And I think going forward... And I may have even said this in the past. Going forward, when I come up to one of those scientific names in parentheses, I'm going to skip it and then come back after I read the sentence. Number two definition. Any of a family of fungi with the sporophore, usually resembling an umbrella and with numerous gills on the underside of the cap. And the uh, family is agaricacae. A-G-A-R-I-C-A-C-E-A-E. Next we have agarose, A-G-A-R-O-S-E. This is a noun from uh, 1953. A polysaccharide obtained from agar and used especially as a supporting medium in gel electrophoresis. Electrophoresis. Next we have Agate. I wanted to say agate, but I knew that that was wrong. Agate. A-G-A-T-E-E. No, whoa, whoa, whoa. What happened there? A-G-A-T-E. This is a noun from 1570. One, a fine-grained, variegated uh, chalcedony. Oh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. I know that word. Uh, Or chalcedony. Having its colors arranged in stripes, Blended in clouds or showing moss-like forms. Chalcedony or chalcedony is one of those words that I know in my head, and when I see it spelled out, everything goes to crap, and I don't know how to say it. I think I'm going to look ahead and make sure I'm pronouncing this correctly. One moment. So according to the pronunciation guide for C-H-A-L-C-E-D-O-N-Y, It looks like there's at least one, two, three, four, maybe five different ways that you can pronounce it. Um, So I'm just going to go with Chalcedony, because that looks like it's one of them. All right, moving on, let's do that one again. Uh, Number one for agate, a fine-grained, variegated Chalcedony, having its colors arranged in stripes, blended in clouds, and showing moss-like forms. Two. Something made of or fitted with agate, as to a, a draw plate used by gold wire drawers, to b, a plain marble of agate, three a, a size of type approximately five and a half point. Really, five and a half point is considered agate. Hmm. Three uh, b, condensed information as advertisements or box scores set especially with agate type, which I think we can assume is very small type at five and a half points. Next, we have agate line. This is a noun from 1870. A space one column wide and one fourteenth of an inch deep used as a unit of measurement in classified advertising. I don't know about you, but I actually find that really interesting that there is a specific phrase for a a space one column wide and a 14th inch deep, etc. Next, we have agate ware. Uh, Two words, W-A-R-E. This is a noun from 1817. One, an enameled iron or steel ware for household utensils. Two, pottery veined and modeled to resemble agate. Next we have agave. Agave. No, I know it's agave. But here it's showing agave. That's what it's saying is that's the pronunciation. A-G-A-V-E. I had a major brain fart there. Agave, that's how I've always heard it pronounced. 
Um, but this is a gavi. Uh, this is a noun from 1763. Any of a genus of plants having spiny margined leaves and flowers in tall spreading panicles and including some cultivated for their fiber or sap or for ornament. And the genus is agave of the family agavaceae, agavace, uh, and that is the agave family. The etymology says this is from the new Latin agave, which is the genus name, which is from the Latin um, a daughter of Cadmus. So I might, I, Agave was a person, uh, the daughter of Cadmus. I don't know. I'll have to look it up. Uh, and then is from the Greek Agaue, uh, A-G-A-U-E. Again, really don't know how to pronounce that. And there is a little black and white drawing of an agave plant. Next, we have agaze, A-G-A-Z-E. This is an adjective from 1720. Engaged in the act of gazing. Just like we had, uh, what was it, a gape and a jar, which we will see soon, is a similar type of word. Next, we have AGC, all caps. This is an abbreviation for Advanced Graduate Certificate. Next, we have AGCY, all lowercase. This is an abbreviation for Agency. And it's not much of an abbreviation because they only got rid of two of the six letters. Next, we have age, first form of the word age, A-G-E. Uh, this is a noun from the thir 13th century. 1A, the time of life at which some particular qualification, power, or capacity arises or rests, as in the voting age is 18. Specifically, it has the synonym majority. Uh, 1B, one of the stages of life. 1c the length of an existence extending from the beginning to any given time as in a boy 10 years of age 1d just has the synonym lifetime 1e an advanced stage of life 2 a period of time dominated by a central figure or prominent feature as in the age of pericles as uh, 2a a period in history of human or human progress, as in the age of reptiles or the age of exploration. To be a cultural period marked by the prominence of a particular item, as in entering the atomic age. To see a division of geologic time that is usually shorter than an ep epoch. 3a, the period contemporary with a person's lifetime or with his or her active life. 3b, a long time, usually used in plural, as in, haven't seen him in ages. I think it's funny that the definition is just a long time. Uh, 3c just has the synonym generation. 4, an individual's development measured in terms of the years requisite for a like development of an average individual. And it, the synonym for the entire word says C, period, P-E-R-I-O-D. Second form of age, this is a verb from the 14th century. Transitive definition uh, definitions are one, to become old, show the effects or the characteristics of increasing age. Two, to acquire a desirable quality as mellowness or ripeness by standing undisturbed for some time as in letting cheese age. The transitive definition de definitions are uh, one, to cause to become old, two, to bring to a state fit for use or to maturity. Ager, A-G-E-R, is a noun. And we have one more for this episode. It is a suffix, A-G-E, so it's dash A-G-E, uh, this doesn't give me a year. One, aggregate or collection, as in trackage, T-R-A-C-K-A-G-E. There's our suffix. Two A, action, process, as in haulage, H-A-U-L-A-G-E. Two B, cumulative result 
of, as in breakage. To see, rate of, as in dosage. Three, house or place of, as in orphanage. Four, state, rank, as in peonage, P E O N A G E. And lastly, five has the definition charge, as in postage. That is a very weird suffix. I was a little confused、uh, by reading all that, but. Because、uh, when I see the word like haulage, dosage, postage, whatever, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of expecting the definition to be that word, but I know it's not. It's about the A G E and what that means in relation to that word. Anyway, that was the end of the episode. We have finished page 23. I hope you're keeping track right along with me. And、uh, next time, I will start on page 24. Thank you and goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to another episode of the dictionary. If you are in the wrong class, that was not what you were expecting, then I suggest you go listen to something else. But this is the dictionary read by me, Spencer.、Um, real quick, I、uh, recently, just earlier today, checked、um, my,、uh, I guess, iTunes podcast information,、uh, ratings, and reviews. Um, and surprisingly, I have five stars from seven ratings, which is totally unexpected. It's unexpected to have、uh, seven ratings, and to have them all be five stars is、um, kind of ridiculous.、Uh, I have no expectations for this podcast whatsoever. So, anything,、uh, just the fact that anybody is listening and downloading is awesome,、um, whether you like it or hate it.、Um, one of the, oh, and I got two reviews from strangers just in the last、uh, few days, which is also cool.、Um, one of them suggested that I do a little preparation before each episode、um, where I figure out what the pronunciations are beforehand. Um, how do you feel about that? Please、uh, rate and review, email, Twitter, whatever. Let me know what you think. I can understand that it could be frustrating to you if I'm really chugging through a, a pronunciation that I can't get right away. My feelings are that I want to be real. I, I don't want to do any preparation. I want this to all be off the cuff.、Um, and、uh, if If you feel that way too, let me know that as well.、Um, but if I get a lot of people who are saying, please don't frustrate me, maybe I will consider doing a little bit of prep.、Uh, but going forward, I'm not going to do any prep, and we are going to get into the first word for today, which is the top of page 24. This word is aged, A G E D. Um, I would, most people would probably want to pronounce it aged.、Um, but、uh, actually, that does look like it is an approved pronunciation.、Um, but I think usually it would be pronounced aged. This is an adjective from the 15th century. One, grown old as 1A, of an advanced age, as in an aged man. 1B, having attained a specified age. As in a man aged, or、oh, this is one of those cases where it is aged, a man aged 40 years. And so I'm glad that they put that in there.、Uh, two, typical of old age. And agedness is a noun. Next, we have age group. It is the word age with a dash and then group. This is a noun from 1904. A segment of a population that is of, that is of approximately the same age. Or is within a specified range of ages. Next, we have ageism. This is a noun from 1969. Prejudice or discrimination against a particular age group and especially the elderly. Ageist、uh, is an adjective. And I kind of feel like ageist could also be a noun,、uh, but maybe we'll actually get to that as a separate word.、Uh, next, we have ageless. This is an adjective from 1651. One, not growing old or showing the effects of age. Two, we have these synonyms timeless and eternal, as in ageless truths. Agelessly is an adverb, and agelessness is a noun. Next, we have age long, all one word. 
This is an adjective from 1810, lasting for an age, and it has the synonym everlasting. Next, we have age mate with a dash in the middle. This is a noun from 1583, one who is of about the same age as another. That's a term I have not heard before. Next, we have agency, a g e n c y. This is a noun from 1640. One a, the office or function of an agent. One b, the relationship between a principal and that person's agent. Two, the capacity, condition, or state of acting or of exerting power, and the synonym is operation. Three. A person or thing through which power is exerted, or an end is achieved. Synonym is instrumentality. I don't think that's a word I've ever heard before. Instrumentality, or I just wasn't aware of it. As in, communicated through the agency of the ambassador. Four, an establishment engaged in doing business for another. As in, an advertising agency. Five, an administrative division, as of a government. As in the Agency for Consumer Protection. Next, we have Agency Shop. This is a noun, circa 1946.、Uh, it's two separate words, by the way. An establishment in which the union serves as the agent for and receives dues and assessments from all employees in the bargaining unit, regardless of union membership. Next, we have Agenda. This is a noun from 1871. One, a list or outline of things to be considered or done, as in agendas of faculty meetings. Two, an underlying, often ideological plan or program, as in a political agenda. Agenda lists is an adjective. I'm guessing that is without agenda.、Uh, the etymology is saying this is、uh, Latin agendum or agendum. I can't remember the. The way to pronounce a G in Latin,、uh, and that is a gerundive of agere,、uh, and it is not telling me what agere means. I believe that is a verb. Next, we have agendum. I guess this would be agendum,、uh, a g e n d u m. This is a noun, circa eighteen forty-seven. One just has the synonym agenda, so yes, agendum. Uh, number two, an item on an agenda. Next, we have a genesis. No, a genesis.、Uh, again, this is one of those where the、uh, a is added to the beginning of the word. So I'm going to assume this is the opposite of genesis.、Uh, noun, circa 1879. Lack or failure of development as of a body part. So the genesis of something is when it is. Uh, created or started,、uh, and so if a body part in this case、um, is not created, for instance, when somebody is born without an arm, say、um, that arm has has a genesis. That's the example that I am making up off the top of my head. Next, we have agent, and I believe this will be the last for today.、Uh, this is a noun from the fifteenth century. One. One that acts or exerts power. Two a, something that produces or is capable of producing an effect, an active or efficient cause. Two b, a chemically, physically, or biologically active principle. Three, a means or instrument by which a guiding intelligence achieves a result. Four, one who is authorized to act for or in the place of another. As for a, a representative, emissary, or official of a government, as in crown agent, or federal agent. For b, one engaged in undercover activities as espionage, or espionage. I don't know why I said it wrong the first time.、Uh, synonym is spy, as in secret agent. For c, a business representative, as of an athlete or entertainer. As in a theatrical agent, five, a computer application designed to automate certain tasks, as gathering information online. 
that will end this episode. Thank you for listening. And again, if you have strong opinions on whether or not I do some prep so I don't pronounce things badly, uh, please let me know in uh, email or Twitter or Facebook um, or leave a rating and a review. Let me know. Um, I hope that if you feel that way, you won't uh, dock me stars if you do add a rating. Um, but if you do and I change my ways, I hope you will will give me back those stars. Um, that is it. Thank you for listening. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to another episode of The Dictionary. First word for today is agent general. Agent with a dash and then the word general. This is a noun from 1833. A chief agent, specifically the representative in England of a British dominion. Next we have agenting. A-G-E-N-T-I-N-G. I know that probably sounded weird, but that's just because I am emphasizing things uh, so you can understand what I'm saying. If I put that word in my normal speech, I wouldn't have said it so weirdly. This is a noun from 1681. The business or activities of an agent. Next, we have Agent Orange. Two words. Uh, first letter is capitalized in both. This is a noun from 1970. An herbicide widely used as a defoliant in the Vietnam War that is composed of 2,4-D and 2,4,5-T. I probably don't need to say the commas. And contains dioxin as a contaminant. Uh, I honestly didn't even know what this was until relatively recently, within the last decade. Um, and I know somebody who was in Vietnam who uh, was exposed to Agent Orange. Uh, the etymology says, so-called from the identifying color stripe on its container. So the chemical itself isn't necessarily orange, but there is an orange stripe on the container, which is where it gets its name. I've heard it is some bad, bad stuff. Next, we have agent provocateur. So it's uh, agent, second word is P-R-O-V-O-C-A-T-E-U-R. This is a noun from 1877. One who employed to associate with sus suspected persons and by pretending sympathy with their aims to incite them to some incriminating action. The etymology is saying this is uh, French, and it literally means provoking agent. So uh, it might be more uh, accurately pronounced as agent prov provocateur. That's probably wrong. But, you know, agent, I just said it the English-American way. Next, we have agentry. A-G-E-N-T-R-Y. Agentry. Uh, this is a noun from 1913. The office, duties, or activities of an agent. Next, we have age of consent from 1504. The age at which one is legally competent to give consent, especially to marriage or to sexual intercourse. And I would expand on that, saying it's not just sexual intercourse, uh, anything sexual, because that's important too. Next, we have age of reason from 16. 50. 1. The time of life when one begins to be able to distinguish right from wrong. 2. A period characterized by a prevailing belief in the use of reason, especially the 18th century in England and France. Uh, for that first definition, it does not give an example of generally when that time in life happens, when you can distinguish from right from wrong. Um, I would argue that for some people it never really happens. Um, probably it's in the toddler to child age range. I have no idea, but um, I'd be curious to see what, what the uh, science says about that. And obviously it's different for everybody. Next we have age old. Age dash old. This is an adjective from 1886. Having existed for ages. And the synonym is ancient. Next we have, and I admit I did look at this ahead of time, ageratum, A-G-E-R-A-T-U-M. 
and I'm going to double check the pronunciation that I already looked at. Adjuratum. I think that's correct. This is a noun from 1866. Any of a genus of annual tropical American composite herbs often cultivated for their small showy heads of usually blue or white flowers. Also, a related blue-flowered perennial. The genus mentioned at the beginning is Ageratum, same word, just with a capital A. And the perennial mentioned at the end is Eupatorium coelestinum. E-U-P-A-T-O-R-I-U-M C-O-E L-E-S-T-I-N-U-M. The etymology is saying this is from the Greek ageratos, which means ageless. Uh, That is from geros, which means old age. And there's more at the word uh, geront dash. So it's a prefix geront, G-E-R-O-N-T. Next, we have age spots. This is two separate words. It is a noun from 1955. Benign, flat spots of dark pigmentation on the skin, as from exposure to the sun, occurring especially among older people, called also liver spots. This reminds me of an old Simpsons episode where uh, Montgomery Burns, I think, is over the shoulder of Homer, and Homer uh, lifts his hand up and is touching Uh, burns his head and he can I guess feel the liver spots and so he goes I think there's three on his head and he goes liver spot liver spot liver spot that was not my impression of Homer Uh, but anytime I think of age spots or liver spots I think of uh, Montgomery Burns's bald head next we have Agada this is a capital A G G A D A H Uh, It is very similar to the uh, Jewish or Hebrew word Haggadah with an H at the beginning. One side of my family uh, does celebrate Passover. I don't know if it's officially a Hebrew word, uh, but it is is definitely part of the Jewish religion. Um, There's also another form of it, Agado, or no, Agadot, Agadot, there we go. And uh, this is a noun from 1856. Ancient Jewish lore forming especially the non-legal part of the Talmud. And it does say this is the, uh, it's another form of the Hebrew word Haggadah, uh, spelled a little bit differently here in the etymology. So it is obviously related to what I was saying. Next we have Aegeus, capital A-G-G-E-U-S. This is a noun from before the 12th century, and it just has the synonym Haggai, H-A-G-G-A-I. Uh, the etymology says this is from the Greek agaios, which is from the Hebrew agai, H-A-G-G-A-I. So maybe we'll get to that word someday and we will learn more about what that means. But obviously I can't look it up in the meantime. Next we have agi, A-G-G-I-E. This is the first form of agi. Um, This is a noun often capitalized from 1902, an agricultural school or college, also a student at such an institution. And the etymology just says it is uh, the word agricultural plus IE, or or rather the first part of agricultural plus IE. Second form of Aggie is a noun from 1915, a plain marble, specifically the synonym agate to be, A-G-A-T-E, to be, which I believe we read recently. And the etymology is saying uh, this is from uh, A-G from agate plus I-E. Next we have aggiornamento. And let's just double check that that is correct. Aggiornamento. Uh, A-G-G-I-O-R-N-A-M-E-N-T-O. This looks Italian to me. Uh, This is a noun from 1963, a bringing up to date. Synonym is modernization, as in dedicated to the aggiornamento of the church. And let's take a look at the etymology. Yes, it is saying it is Italian from aggiornare, which means to bring up to date. Uh, That is from the Latin uh, a or ad plus giorno which means day. 
And that is from the Latin diurnum, which means day. And there's more at the word journey. Next, we have agglomerate. A-G-G-L-O-M-E-R-A-T-E. First form. Uh, it is not the word conglomerate. That would be in the C's. Uh, but maybe these are related in some way. It's a very similar word although spelled a little differently. Uh, this is a verb, transitive verb, from 1684. To gather into a ball, mass, or cluster. The etymology says this is from the Latin uh, agglomerare, which means to heap up or join, and that is from agglomer uh, or glomus, which means ball, and there's more at the word clam, C-L-A-M, where clam comes into the picture, I am no, I have no clue. That's super fascinating to me. So if you if you're if you're putting stuff into a ball of some kind, you are agglomerating them. Now we have the second form of agglomerate. This is an adjective from 1828, gathered into a ball, mass or cluster, specifically clustered or growing together but not coherent, as in an agglomerate flower head. So once you have agglomerated the things, they are now considered agglomerate. And here we have the third form of agglomerate. Noun from 1830. One, a rock composed of volcanic fragment, fragments of various size and degrees of angularity. Two, a jumbled mass or collection and agglomeration is the synonym, and it is also our next word, agglomeration. This is a noun from 1774. One, the action or process of collecting in a mass. Two, a heap or cluster of usually disparate elements, as in urban agglomerations knit together by the new railways, and that is from the Times Lit Sup. Uh, lit Sup are... Um, abbreviated, and I, to be perfectly honest, don't know what that is an abbreviation for. Literary supply, something like that. Uh, an agglomerative is an adjective. And now we have the last word for this episode, agglutinability. A-G-G-L-U-T-I-N-A-B-I-L-I-T-Y. This is a noun from 1901. Capacity, as of red blood cells, to be agglutinated. And agglutinable is an adjective. That will be the end of the episode. Thank you for listening. And now I record two more episodes on this page called 24. Thank you and goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to another episode of The Dictionary. Uh, first word for today is agglutinate, A-G-G-L-U-T-I-N-A-T-E. Uh, this might be related to the last word of the last episode. By the way, this is the first form of agglutinate. This is a verb from uh, 1586. Transitive definitions are 1. To cause, to adhere. Synonym is fasten. F-A-S-T-E-N. 2. To combine into a compound. Attach to a base as an affix. A-F-F-I-X. 3. To cause to undergo agglutination. The intransitive verb definitions are 1. To unite or combine into a group or mass. 2. To form words by agglutination. The etymology is saying this is from the Latin agglutinatus, uh, which is from the verb agglutinare, which means to glue to. That is from glutinare, which means to glue, and uh, also from gluten, which means glue. I guess that's the Latin word gluten, which means glue. And there's more at the word clay. Now we have the second form of agglutinate. This is a noun from 1952. A clump of agglutinated material as blood cells or mineral particles in soil. Next is agglutination. This is a noun from 1541. 1. The action or process of agglutinating. 2. 
a mass or group formed by the union of separate elements. Three, the formation of derivational or inflectional words by putting together constituents of which each express a single definite meaning. Four, a reaction in which particles, as red blood cells or bacteria, suspended in a liquid collect into clumps and which occurs especially as a serologic response to a specific antibody. Next word is agglutinative. And yes, I did do a little prep because I had a hard time with that word. Uh, A-G-G-L-U-T-I-N-A-T-I-V-E. This is an adjective from 1634. One just has the synonym adhesive. Two, characterized by linguistic agglutination. Next we have agglutinin. A-G-G-L-U-T-I-N-I-N. This is a noun from 1902. A substance as an antibody, antibody, producing agglutination. Next we have agglutinogen. This is a noun from 1904. An antigen whose presence results in the formation of an agglutinin. Uh, agglutinogenic is an adjective. It uh, looks like we have finished finished our agglutin words. Next word is aggradation. A-G-G-R-A-D-A-T-I-O-N. This is a noun from 1898. A modification of the Earth's surface in the direction of uniformity by grade by deposition. Of grade by deposition. Uh, ag- aggradational is an adjective. Next we have aggrandize, uh, A-G-G-R-A-N-D-I-S-E. Don't worry, I won't spell all of them. This is the British variant of aggrandize with a Z instead of an S, which is our next word. Aggrandize, this is a verb from 1634, transitive. One, to make great or greater. Synonyms are increase and enlarge, as in aggrandize an estate. Two, to make appear great or greater, praise highly. Three, to enhance the power, wealth, position, or reputation of, as in exploited the situation to aggrandize himself. Aggrandizement is a noun, and aggrandizer is also a noun. Next and last word for this episode, it's kind of a long one because it has some usage information at the end. Uh, This is the word aggravate, A-G-G-R-A-V-A-T-E. And our next episode will be a little bit shorter because this goes past halfway down the column. So this is a transitive verb from 1530. One is obsolete. Uh, 1A, to make heavy. Synonym is burden. 1B has the synonym increase. So I think both of those are obsolete. Uh, Two, to make worse, more serious, or more severe. Intensify unpleasantly, as in problems have been aggravated by neglect. 3A, to rouse to displeasure or anger by usually persistent and often petty goading. Goading is spelled G-O-A-D-I-N-G. It has nothing to do with the animal that goes, although maybe that's a sheep. Uh, 3B, to produce inflammation in. So now we have some usage information, and it says, Although aggravate has been used in sense 3A since the 17th century, it has been the object of disapproval only since about 1870. It is used in expository prose, as in when his silly conceit about his not very good early work has begun to aggravate us, that is from William Stritton or Stritton, but seems to be more common in speech and casual writing, as in a good profession for him because bus drivers get aggravated. That is from Jackie Gleason in an interview in 1986. Also, as in, and now this letter comes to aggravate me a thousand times worse. That is from Mark Twain in a letter from 1864. Sense 2 is far more common than sense 3a in published prose. Such is not the case, however, with aggravation 
and aggravatin. Aggravation is used in sense three somewhat more than in its earlier sense. Aggravating has practically no use other than to express annoyance. That I think is the first time I've ever seen、um, a usage explanation. Um, and I'm surprised that it took us 24 pages to get there. But that is the end of the episode. Thank you for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer reading the entire dictionary to you. Thank you and goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to another episode of the dictionary. First word for today is aggravated assault. Two separate words.、Uh, not a good word. Noun from 1845. An assault that is more serious than a common assault, as a, an assault combined with an intent to commit a crime, and b, any of various assaults so defined by statute.、Um, I have to tell a little joke here that somebody told me in high school.、Uh, there were two peanuts walking down the street, and one of them was assaulted. Next, we have the word. Aggravating. This is an adjective from 1673. Arousing displeasure, impatience, or anger, as in an aggravating habit. And the usage says, "See the word aggravate," which we read at the end of the last episode. And I assume that you are reading all these, reading,、uh, listening to these in order. I'm the one doing the reading. You just get to sit there and listen with your ear holes. Next, we have the word aggravation. This is a noun, circa 1555. One, an act or circumstance that intensifies or makes worse. Two, the act, action, or result of aggravating, especially an increasing in seriousness or severity, as in aggravation of an injury. Three has the synonyms irritation and provocation, and it also says、uh, usage c aggravate. Next, we have aggregate,、uh, a g g r e g a t e. This is the first form of aggregate.、Uh, this is an adjective from the 15th century, formed by the collection of units or particles into a body, mass, or amount.、Uh, synonym is collective. As a one clustered in a dense mass or head. As in an aggregate flower, a two formed from several separate ovaries of a single flower, as in aggregate fruit. B composed of mineral crystals in one or more kinds, or of mineral rock fragments. C taking all units as a whole, as in aggregate sales. Aggregately is an adverb, and aggregateness is a noun. The etymology is saying this is from the Latin verb aggregare, which means to add to, and、uh, that is from ad plus greg or grex, which means flock. If you say so.、Uh, next, we have the second form of aggregate. This is a transitive verb from the 15th century. One, to collect or gather into a mass or whole. W h o l e. Two. An amount in the aggregate too, and the synonym is total. We have a third form of aggregate. This is a noun from the 15th century. One, a mass or body of units or parts somewhat loosely associated with one another. Two, the whole sum or amount. Sum total is a synonym. Three a, an aggregate rock. Three b. Any of several hard inert materials, as sand, gravel, or slag, used for mixing with a cementing material to form concrete, mortar, or plaster. Three C, a clustered mass of individual soil particles, varied in shape, ranging in size from a microscopic granule to a small crumb, and considered the basic structural unit of soil. Four says see the、uh, word set. Twenty-one, twenty-one. Are there twenty-one definitions or more for the word set? Maybe.、Uh, five has the synonym monetary aggregate. We have a phrase、uh, in the aggregate that means considered as a whole, 
and the synonym is collectively, as in dividends for the year amounted in the aggregate to $25 million. Next is aggregation. This is a noun from 1547. One, a group, body, or mass composed of many distinct parts or individuals. 2a, the collecting of units or parts into a mass or whole. 2b, the condition of being so collected. Aggregational is an adjective. Aggregative is our next word. This is an adjective from 1644. 1. Of or relating to an aggregate. 2. Tending to aggregate. Aggre aggregatively is an adverb. Next is aggress. A-G-G-R-E-S-S. -S. This is a, an intransitive verb from circa 1714. To commit aggression or act aggressively. Next, we have the word aggression. This is a noun from 1611. 1. A forceful action or procedure as an unprovoked attack, especially when intended to dominate or master. 2. The practice of making attacks or encroachments, especially unprovoked violation by one country of the territorial integrity of another. 3. Hostile or hostile, injurious or destructive behavior or outlook, especially when caused by frustration. The etymology says this is from the Latin aggressio, which means attack. That is from agredi, which means to attack. And that is from gradi, which means to step or go. And there's more at the word grade. Next and last word for today is aggressive. Um, this actually is long, and it goes onto the top of the next page pretty well. Uh, so it looks like this episode won't be as short as I thought. This is an adjective from 1824. 1A, tending toward or exhibiting aggression, as in aggressive behavior. 1B, marked by combative readiness, as in an aggressive fighter. 2A, marked by obtrusive energy. 2B, marked by driving forceful energy or initiative. Synonym is enterprising, as in an aggressive salesman. 3. Strong or emphatic in effect or intent, as in aggressive colors or aggressive flavors. 4. Growing, developing, or spreading rapidly, as in aggressive bone tumors. You do not want those. 5. More severe, intensive, or comprehensive than usual, in, uh, especially in dosage or extent, as in aggressive chemotherapy. Aggressively is an adverb, and aggressiveness is a noun, and ag aggress aggressivity is also a noun. We have some synonym information. Here we go. Aggressive, militant, assertive, self-assertive, mean obtrusively energetic, especially in pursuing particular goals. Aggressive implies a disposition to dominate, often in disregard of others' rights or in determined and energetic pursuit of one's ends. As in, aggressive in his business dealings. Militant also implies a fighting disposition, but suggests not self-seeking, but devotion to a cause, movement, or principle. As in, militant protesters rallied against the new law. Assertive suggests bold self-confidence in expression of opinion, as in, the more assertive speakers dominated the forum. Self-assertive connotes forwardness or brash self-confidence, as in, a self-assertive young upstart. That will end the episode. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer reading the dictionary. Thank you and goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to another episode of The Dictionary. First word for today is aggressor, A-G-G-R-E-S-S-O-R. -S -S this is a noun from 1646, one that commits or practices aggression. 
think that would be kind of an odd thing. I'm, I, I'm practicing aggression today. Have you done your, uh, your practices? Have you spent your three hours uh, aggression practicing time today? You better go do it. Next word is aggrieve. There's a double G here. This is a transitive verb from the 14th century. One, to give pain or trouble to. Uh, synonym is distress. Two, to inflict injury on. And a synonym for the whole word is uh, says, see the word wrong, W-R-O-N-G. The etymology says this is from the Latin aggravare, uh, which means to make heavier. Next, we have aggrieved. This is an adjective from the 14th century. One, troubled or distressed in spirit. To A, suffering from an infringement or denial of legal rights, as in aggrieved minority groups. To B, showing or expressing grief, injury, or offense, as in an aggrieved plea. Aggrievedly is the adverb. Next is aggrievement. This is a noun from 1847, the quality or state of being aggrieved. Next is agro, A-G-G-R-O, first form of it. It is a noun from 1969. One is British, deliberately aggressive, provoking or violent behavior. Two is also British. It just has the synonyms exasperation and irritation. The etymology says this is probably uh, taking the first part of the word aggravation and adding an O to it, uh, and it says later taken as short for aggression. Next is the second form of aggro. This is an adjective from 1970. Aggressive or aggressively daring in style or manner. Next we have aghast, A-G-H-A-S-T. This is an adjective from the 13th century. Struck with terror, amazement, or horror. The synonym is shocked. The etymology says this is from uh, Middle English agasten, which means to frighten. Uh, the gasten just means to frighten, and there's more at the word abide and gast. Next is agile, A-G-I-L-E. This is an adjective from 1581. One, marked by ready ability to move with quick easy grace, as in an agile dancer. Dancer. I said that weird. Two, having a quick, resourceful, and adaptable character, as in an agile mind. And you notice I said agile. Uh, it, uh, it does look like agile is also an approved pronunciation. Uh, I think that just depends on your personality and the context. Uh, but agile or agile is good. Uh, and agile is an adverb, or agile either one. The etymology says this is from the Latin agere, which means to drive or act, uh, and there's more at the word agent. Next we have agility. This is a noun from the 15th century. The quality or state of being agile, uh, nimbleness and dexterity are synonyms as in, played with increasing agility. Next we have, again, A-G-I-N. It says this is a variation of the word against. Next we have aging, A-G-I-N-G. It says it is a, oh, I think that means present participle. It says pres part of the word age, A-G-E. Next we have ageism. A-G-I-S-M. It is a variation of ageism, A-G-E-I-S-M. Next we have agita. I think that's how it's pronounced. A-G-I-T-A. This is a noun from 1982. A feeling of agitation or anxiety. The uh, etymology says it looks uh, like it is Spanish or Italian. Um, from acido, which literally means heartburn or acid, and it is from the Latin acidus. Next and last word for today 
is agitate, A-G-I-T-A-T-E. This is a verb from the 15th century. Transitive definitions are 1A, which is obsolete, to give motion to. 1B, to move with an irregular, rapid, or violent action, as in, the storm agitated the sea. 2. To excite and often trouble the mind or feelings of. Uh, synonym for that is disturb. 3a. To discuss excitedly and earnestly. 3b. To stir up public discussion of. The intransitive uh, definition is to attempt to arouse public feeling, as in agitated for better schools. And in general, the synonym says, see the words uh, shake and discompose. I've heard of decompose. I don't think I've heard of discompose, to my knowledge. Uh, agitatedly is an adverb. And the etymology says this is from the Latin agitare, or agitare, uh, which says frequently of agere, which means to drive. And there's more at the word agent, which I think we just read something similar recently. Uh, so that will be the end of the episode. Thank you for listening. Thank you and goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to another episode of The Dictionary. Thank you for joining me. Uh, just a reminder, I do have a Patreon waiting for that first uh, first patron. Will they ever appear? I do not know. Will it affect anything? Probably not. Uh, but today, we are starting with the word agitative, A-G-I-T-A-T-I-V-E. This is an adjective from 1697. The definition just says, causing agitation. Next, we have agitato, uh, A-G-I-T-A-T-O. This is an adverb or an adjective from 1801. In a restless and agitated manner, used as a direction in music. Agitato. The etymology says this is from the Italian, which literally means agitated, and that is from the Latin agitatus. Next we have agitator. A-G-I-T-A-T-O-R. This is a noun from 1663. One that agitates as a... One who stirs up public feeling on controversial issues, as in political agitator. Or B, a device or an apparatus for stirring or shaking. Next we have agitprop, all one word, A-G-I-T-P-R-O-P. -P. This is a noun from 1935. We have the synonym propaganda, especially political propaganda, promulate promulgated chiefly in literature, drama, music, or art. Uh, agitprop is also an adjective. The etymology says this is uh, a Russian. It looks like it's from, uh, it's taking the first four letters of agitatsia uh, plus the first four letters of propaganda. Next we have AGL. This is an abbreviation, all caps, for above ground level. Next, we have the word, uh, it looks like aglia or aglea, uh, capital A-G-L-A-I-A. -A. This is a noun from 1579, one of the three graces. And it looks like it is from the Latin, originally Greek. Uh, so I, I don't know who the three graces are. I'll have to look that up. Next, we have aglare. A-G-L-A-R-E. This is an adjective from 1866. We have the synonym glaring, as in, his eyes aglare with fury. Next, we have a gleam. This is an adjective from 1854, gleaming especially with reflected light. Next is aglet, A-G-L-E-T. This is a noun from the 15th century. One, the plain or ornamental tag covering the ends of a lace or point. Two, any of various ornamental studs, cords, or pins worn in clothing. The etymology looks like this is from the old French aguille, 
Uh, not sure of the pronunciation of that, which means needle, which reminds me of Game of Thrones. Uh, that is from the Latin acicula or acucula, which means ornamental pin. And that is from the Latin acus, which means needle or pin. And there's more at the word acute. A-C-U-T-E. Next we have agle. A-G-L-E-Y. This is an adverb from 1785. It is chiefly Scottish. We have the synonyms awry and wrong. Awry is spelled A-W-R-Y. As in, the best laid schemes, o oh mice and men, gang aft agle. That is from Robert Burns. Next is a glitter. This is an adjective from 1865, glittering especially with reflected light, similar to a gleam. And I have never seen it, but uh, I'm guessing the vampires in uh, Twilight would be a glitter. Next is a glow, a g l o w. This is an adjective from 1817, glowing especially with warmth or excitement. Our next word is a glycone, or is it agli? No, a glycone, a g l y c o n e, and it looks like it could also be aglycon. This is a noun from 1925, an organic compound, as a uh, phenol or alcohol combined with the sugar portion of a glycoside. Next is AGN, all caps. This is an abbreviation for active galactic nucleus or active galactic nuclei. Our next word is agnate, A-G-N-A-T-E. This is the first form of agnate. It is a noun from 1534. One, a relative whose kinship is traceable exclusively through males. Two, a paternal Kingsman, or no, kinsman, sorry, there's no G in kinsman. So I wonder if uh, agnate is, uh, looks like it's specifically uh, male. I wonder if there is a female version of this and, and what that word would be. This is from the Latin agnatus, which is from agnaski, which means to born in addition to. That is from uh, naski, which means to be born. And there's more at the word nation. Next is our second form of agnate. This is an adjective from 1782. One just has the synonyms allied and akin. Two, related through male descent or on the father's side. And agnatic is an adjective. Next is agnean, capital A-G-N-E-A-N. This is a noun from 1939. We just have the synonym Tokarian A. So, Tokarian is spelled T-O-C-H-A-R-I-A-N. I'm guessing on the pronunciation, and it's probably just the definition A. Looks like the etymology is saying this is from Agni, A-G-N-I, which is an ancient kingdom in Turkestan. Agnize is our next word, A-G-N-I-Z-E. This is a transitive verb from 1535. Uh, it is archaic and it has the synonyms recognize and acknowledge. This is from the Latin agnoscere, which means to acknowledge. Uh, that is from noscere, which means to know. Uh, and there's more at the word no, K-N-O-W. Next we have agnolati or agnoloti. Looks like this would probably be an Italian word. Uh, it is spelled A-G-N-O-L-O-T-T-I. This is a noun from 1953. Pasta in the form of semi semicircular cases containing a filling, as of meat, cheese, or vegetables. Anytime you fill pasta with something, it is good. It looks like uh, I'm paring this down a little bit from the Italian anello, which means ring. Uh, which is from uh, the Latin anellus, which is from uh, anus, or anus, they would probably say, which means ring, and there's more at the word anus. When you read the dictionary, sometimes you have to keep your head out of the gutter. Next we have agnomen, A-G-N-O-M-E-N. This is a noun 
from 1665, an additional cognomen given to a person by the ancient Romans as an honor of some achievement. Cognomen is C-O-G-N-O-M-E-N. I only spell that because it is a uh, not a particularly common word, and I don't really know what it is. Uh, the etymology says this is from the Latin uh, nomen, which means name, and there's more of the word name. Our next word is agnosia, A-G-N-O-S-I-A. This is a noun circa 1900. Loss or diminution of the ability to recognize familiar objects or stimuli, usually as a result of brain damage. Uh, that does not sound like a condition that I would want to have or I would want anybody to have. Uh, not being able to recognize things. Sounds like that sucks. This is from the Greek agnosia, which means ignorance. Uh, and that's from uh, gnosis, G-N-O-S-I-S, which means knowledge. And that is from gignoskin. Don't know what that means. We have one more word for today, and that is agnostic, A-G-N-O-S-T-I-C. It is the first form of agnostic. This is uh, a word. Yes, it is a word uh, that is brought up when religion is talked about. And religion can be a very hot topic with some people. Sometimes I get into religious conversations, but I try not to uh, get to aggressive about it to go back to our uh, previous episode but this definition is saying it is a noun from 1869 one a person who holds the view that any ultimate reality as god is unknown and probably unknowable broadly one who is not committed to believing in either the, either the existence or the non-existence of god or a god two a person unwilling to commit to an opinion about something, as in political agnostics. Agnosticism is a noun. The etymology says this is from the Greek agnostos, which means unknown or unknowable. Uh, and gnostos, or what there's a G at the beginning of gnostos, uh, means known. And then there's uh, gignoskin. Is that the same one that I read before? Yes, gignoskin. Again, don't know about the pronunciation. That means to know, and there's more at the word know, K-N-O-W. If I had to pick a label, which I don't really like doing, I would probably have to call myself agnostic, uh, to be perfectly honest. I don't know what is up there, out there, all around us. Uh, may, I may never know. Uh, there could be. There might not be. I just have no idea, and again, probably never will have an idea. That will end this episode. The first word for the next one will also be the word agnostic. It will be the second form of it. Thank you for listening, and goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to another episode of The Dictionary. First word for today, as I mentioned if you listened to the last one, is the word agnostic. This is the second form, A-G-N-O-S-T-I-C. And uh, just a little reminder, it is from the Greek agnostos, which means unknown or unknowable. This is an adjective from 1873. I don't remember if I said that. I could have. I may not have. I guess we'll never know. One, of relating to or being an agnostic or the beliefs of agnostics. Two just has these synonyms non-committal and undogmatic. Next, we have the word agnus dei. A-G-N-U-S. That's the first word with a capital A. Second word is capital D-E-I. This is a noun from the 14th century. One, a liturgical prayer addressed to Christ as Savior. 2. An image of a lamb often with a halo and a banner and cross used as a symbol of Christ. The etymology says this is from the Latin, I think it literally means lamb of God. 
Uh, and that is from its opening words. That's what it says. I don't know what that is. Interesting that Agnus Dei and Agnostic are right next to each other in the dictionary, or at least this dictionary. Next, we have ago, A-G-O, adjective or adverb from 14th century, earlier than the present time, as in 10 years ago. The etymology says this is from the Middle English uh, ago or agon, which means to pass away. Uh, also Old English agan, A-G-A-N, and uh, that is from gan, which means to go. There's more at the word abide and go. Next is agog, A-G-O-G. That is a fun word to say. Uh, this is an adjective from the, f- uh, the from 1559. Full of intense interest or excitement. Eager is a synonym. As in, kids all agog over new toys. I feel like that description is from the 50s. I don't know of anybody who would say that today. But I can imagine my dad, who was born in 1950, would have been agog over his new toys. This is from the uh, Middle French, en gougou, en space g o g u e s, and that means in mirth, m i r t h. Next we have agogo, another fun word to say. The first form of agogo, did not expect it to have two forms. Uh, it is spelled a dash g o dash g o. This is a noun from 1965. A nightclub for dancing to popular music. Synonym is disco. The etymology says this is from the Whiskey A Go Go Cafe and Discotheque in Paris, France. Second form of A Go Go is an adjective from 1965. One just has the synonym Go Go One. So when we get to go-go, we will find more about that one. Two, being in a whirl of motion. Whirl is W-H-I-R-L. Three, being up to date, often used post-positively. And next we have uh, a suffix. It doesn't have a pronunciation guide, but I'm going to guess it is pronounced Agog or agog, and maybe as I read, I will figure out a better pronunciation. This is from, it's not giving me a year, just says substance that promotes the secretion or expulsion of, as in emenagog, E M M E N A G O G U E. The etymology says this is from the Latin uh, suffix agogus or agogus, which means promoting the expulsion of. And uh, I have greatly pared that down. There is more at the word agent. Next, we have the word agon, A-G-O-N. This is a noun from 1600. We have the synonym conflict, especially the dramatic conflict between the chief characters in a literary work. Our next word is, I believe it's pronounced, agonal, agonal, uh, A-G-O-N-A-L. This is an adjective from 1901 of relating to or associated with agony and especially the death agony. I would uh, guess it might be pronounced agonal. That, that makes more sense. Next, we have agon, A-G-O-N-E or agon. That makes more sense. Um, This is an adjective or adverb from the 14th century. It is archaic. It just has the synonym ago, which we have read previously. Next, we have agonize, uh, also agonized and agonizing, uh, A-G-O-N-I-S-E. This is the British variation of agonize, agonized, and agonizing. Uh, This reminds me of a song called Agony that is in, if I am remembering correctly, the the musical Into the Woods. I have a theatrical family, and so I saw some plays growing up. And uh, this is a very good musical and and also a very good and funny song. I think there's two versions of it in the show, Um, and it's it's a good one. Go check it out. Next, we have Agonist. 
A-G-O-N-I-S-T. This is a noun circa 1623. One, one that is engaged in a struggle. Two, it says it's from uh, antagonist, A, to A, a muscle that is controlled by the action of an antagonist with which it is paired. To B, a chemical substance capable of combining with a specific receptor on a cell and initiating the same reaction or activity typically produced by the binding endog- endogenous substance, as in dopin- dopaminergic agonist. And it says compare to the word antagonist to be. That was a lot of information I did not understand. Apologies. Uh, the etymology says this is from the Greek agonistes, which is from agonisithai, zisithai, uh, which means to contend. Next is agonistic. This is an adjective from 1648. One, of or relating to the athletic contents of ancient Greece. Two, just has the synonym argumentative. Three, striving for effect. And we have the synonym strained. Four, of relating to or being aggressive or defensive. Social interaction as fighting, fleeing, or submitting between individuals usually of the same species. Agnostically is an adverb. And I guess we'll do one more for this episode. Agonize. A-G-O-N-I-Z-E. This is a verb uh, from 1583. Transitive definition is to cause to suffer agony. Torture is a synonym. The intransitive definition, uh, there's two of them. One, to suffer agony, torture, or anguish, as in agonize over every decision. And two, just has the synonym struggle. That will end this episode. Thank you for listening. Again, there's contact info in the episode details. And if you would like to become a patron on Patreon, I believe there's a link in there too. Thank you and goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to a riveting episode of the dictionary. If I have done my math correctly, which supposedly I didn't earlier and I had to change things, this is episode 99. You know what that means. I don't know. It doesn't really mean anything. Right off the bat, I will let you know, again, with, uh, I like to be transparent with you, I am recording four episodes. This is the fourth. It is the bottom of page 25. Uh, When I record these, I have a little uh, external recorder that I can hold in my hand, um, and my hand feels like it's getting a little numb. I've been holding this thing for probably 45 minutes. Is that right? Yep, about 45 minutes. And uh, my hand feels weird, and this little smallish light machine feels very large and heavy in my hand, even though it is not. So I am going to get through this, and then I'm going to put the thing down. But now, have you ever had that feeling? It's just like, if you sit funny and your arm or leg gets numb, and it just feels sometimes either like really big, really weird, and it just doesn't, something just feels wrong. But I'm just going to go with it, and uh, we'll see if I have any problems later. Hopefully I do not. First word for today is agonized. A-G-O-N-I-Z-E-D. This is an adjective from 1583. Characterized by suffering or expressing agony. Next we have agonizing with an I-N-G. This is an adjective from 1593. Causing agony. Agonizingly is an adverb. Next is agony, our main word from all these things that we've been reading. This is a noun from the 14th century. 1a, intense pain of mind or body. Synonyms are anguish and torture. 1b, the struggle that precedes death. 2, a violent struggle or contest. 3, A strong, sudden display, as of joy or delight. Outburst is a synonym. And for the entire word, it says, see the word distress. The etymology looks like it's coming from the Greek agonia, which means struggle or anguish. 
And that is from agan, which means gathering or contest for a prize. And that is from, I guess, agin, agin, A-G-E-I-N, which means to lead or celebrate. And there's more at the word agent, which we've read. We read that a while ago, didn't we? And uh, looking back, that was kind of a long one. Next is agony ant. Two words. First word is agony. Second word is A-U-N-T, or as some like to say, aunt. This is a noun from 1975. It is chiefly British, one who writes an agony column. I've never heard of an agony column. I've heard of a, uh, like a help column a, uh, where you send in a question and they give you some help. Uh, that is not the right term for it. I am blanking on what it is, but I've never heard of an agony column. Oh, look, that is our next word. Words. Uh, agony column is a noun from 1863. It is chiefly British. One, a newspaper column of personal advertisements relating especially to missing relatives or friends. Wow, that's depressing. Two is also chiefly British. A newspaper column that includes letters from readers seeking personal advice and the columnist's replies. Okay, so advice column was the word that I was looking for, not a help column. I knew that that was wrong. Uh, so I guess an agony column in Britain is essentially the same as an advice column, or it can be. Or sometimes you can just put in advertisements talking about people in your life who are missing. Next, we have the word, I believe it is pronounced agora, A-G-O-R-A. This is the first form. Uh, it is a noun from 1598, a gathering place, especially the marketplace in ancient Greece. This is from the Greek uh, uh, agirin, I don't know the pronunciation, which means to gather. Second form of agora uh, looks like it is pronounced Agora, with a little bit more emphasis on the ra. Uh, again, the pronunciation might be a little bit weird. Uh, this is a noun from 1963. Uh, it says, see the word shekel, S-H-E-K-E-L, in the money table. So we'll get to that in a long, long time. This is from, uh, it says, uh, looks like modern Hebrew, agora, which is from Hebrew, which means a small coin. Interesting. Next, we have agoraphobia. This is a noun from 1873. Abnormal fear of being helpless in an embarrassing or unescapable situation that is characterized especially by the avoidance of open or public places. Agoraphobe is a noun, and agoraphobic is an adjective or a noun. Next is the word agati. I think that is how it's pronounced. I wanted to say aguti, but I think it is telling me it is agati or something like that. A-G-O-U-T-I. It is a noun from 1625. One, any of a genus of tropical American rodents about the size of a rabbit. The genus word is dasiprocta. Two, a grizzled color of fur resulting from the barring of each hair in several alternate dark and light bands. And there is a little black and white picture of the rodent agouti. Next, we have AGR or AGRIC. These are abbreviations for agricultural or agriculture. Our next word is a graph, spelled A-G-R-A-F-E, or there could also be a double F. This is a noun from 1643, a hook and loop fastening, especially an ornamental clasp used in armor or costumes. Next, we have a granulocyte, A-G-R-A-N-U-L-O-C-Y-T-E. This is a noun from circa 1923, a white blood cell without cytoplasmic granules. Next is a granulocytosis. Should I spell it for you? Okay. A G R A N U L O C Y T O S I S. This is a noun from 1927. An acute 
a febrile or febrile condition marked by severe disease in blood granulocytes and often associated with the use of certain drugs. Next is agrapha, A-G-R-A-P-H-A. This is a noun from 1890. Sayings of Jesus not in the canonical gospels, but found in other New Testament or early Christian writings. That is interesting. I wonder if um, any of them conflict with anything that's in uh, the Bible, or I like to say the Bible. The etymology says this is from Greek uh, agraphos, which means unwritten, and the word graphene means to write, and there's more at the word carve. Next, we have agraphia, A-G-R-A-P-H-I-A. This is a noun from 1871. The pathologic loss of the ability to write, uh, which I think is basically saying physically you don't have the ability to write anymore, and so you have uh, agraphia. That would be bad. Next, we have agrarian. This is the first form of it, A-G-R-A-R-I-A-N. It is an adjective from the 1600, not the 1600, just 1600. Uh, One, of or relating to fields or lands or their tenure. Two, A, of relating to or characteristic of farmers or their way of life, as in agrarian values. Two, B, organized or designed to promote agricultural interests. The etymology says this is from the Latin agrarius, uh, which means field, or I guess agare, A-G-E-R, means field, and there's more at the word acre. Second form of agrarian is a noun from 1818, a member of an agrarian party or movement. Next and last word for today is agrarianism, This is a noun from 1830, a social or political movement designed to bring about land reforms or to improve the economic status of the farmer. And if you were wondering, agrarianism is spelled A-G-R-A-R-I-A-N-I-S-M. There is one more word that starts uh, at the bottom of this page 25, but it is very long. It goes on to the next page. So we're going to skip it for the next episode, which is probably not a milestone of anything. That will end the episode. Thank you for listening, and goodbye. Hello, Word Nerds. Welcome to another episode of The Dictionary, and this one just happens to be episode 100. Yes, I made it to 100. Uh, This really doesn't mean anything, especially considering I am uploading episodes every single day. And I have probably tens of thousands to get through. Um, but I have some things to say. Let's see. First, uh, that my p sounds probably don't sound so great. Uh, the the audio booth that I am recording in, that I have been recording in, uh, it, it has lost its uh, music stand and microphone system. Uh, I haven't been in here for maybe a week. Um, so somebody at work decided to take it and put it somewhere else, and I wasn't aware, and I didn't really feel like going to going to look for it. Um, but I'm using my own external recorder, as I've mentioned before. Um, but the little mesh thing in front of the microphone to, uh, to fix the p sounds is gone. So apologies if this sounds crappier. Uh, okay, so 100th episode. Again, not a huge milestone, but it's at least uh, worth mentioning. And maybe because it's the 100th episode, um, I will maybe be a little preachy. I'll, I'll say some things that are on my mind, because if you're going to do it, why not do it on the 100th episode? Uh, so I'll, I'll keep it brief. Um, last night, I watched uh, the most recent episode of Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, and he talked about climate change, specifically the Green New Deal which is, uh, at the moment of the recording is being talked about a lot. Uh, climate change is a big deal. I don't think people quite realize how big of a deal it actually is. Uh, even minor changes have drastic effects on nature in general, on the earth. 
And this is, other than maybe a, an asteroid hitting the Earth uh, and maybe a nuclear war, uh, this is the biggest thing that humans have to worry about right now. This is affecting us now. It is going to affect us more so uh, as things don't change or if things don't change. We are going to feel the effects more. Kids, our kids, for those of you who do have kids, their kids are going to feel all the effects. Uh, this is not good. Please, please, please do whatever you can to to slow this down. Obviously, you know, major companies and factories and, and things like that, they, they have maybe the biggest pull. Uh, they can do the most. But I don't think uh, everyday people quite realize what they can do. And uh, because I personally feel strongly about this, this is the one thing that I'll mention to you, which is try to eat less meat and less dairy. Yes, I am saying it. I am not saying this from a point of ethical reasons for the animals, although that's the reason why I do it and my wife does it. But it is still a useful thing to do for your health and for the health of the environment. It's pretty amazing how bad of an effect those things have on carbon being released into the air and climate in general. So please just uh, for your health and for the health of the planet, please consider doing that. And of course, the animals will thank you as well. Now, let's get on to the words. I'm sitting on the floor and my butt is already starting to hurt. First word for today is agree, A-G-R-E-E. -E. This is a verb from the 15th century. Transitive definitions, 1A, to concur in as an opinion. Synonyms are admit and concede, as in agrees that he is right. 1B, to consent to as a course of action, as in agreed to sell him the house. 2 is chiefly British. To settle on by common consent. Synonym is arrange. As in, I agreed rental terms with him. That is from Eric Bennett. Intransitive definitions. 1. To accept or concede something as the views or wishes of another. As in, agree to a plan. 2a. To achieve or be in harmony as of opinion, feeling, or purpose, as in, we agree in our taste in music. To be, to get along together. To see, to come to terms, as in, agree on a fair division of profits. 3a, to be similar, synonym is correspond, as in, both copies agree. 3b, to be consistent, as in, the story agrees with the facts. And we all know facts are important. Four, to be fitting, pleasing, or healthful. Suit is a synonym. As in, this climate agrees with him. Funny that the word climate is in the example, and I was just talking about that. Five, to have an inflectional form denoting identity or other regular correspondence in a grammatical category as gender, number, case, or person. Now we have synonym information about agree. Agree, concur, coincide, mean to come into or be in harmony regarding a matter of opinion. Agree implies complete accord, usually attained by discussion and adjustment of differences, as in on some points we can all agree. Concur often implies approval of someone else's statement or decision, as in, if my wife concurs, it's a deal. Coincide, used more often of opinions, judgments, wishes, or interests than of people, implies total agreement, as in, their wishes coincide exactly with my desire. And it says you can also see, in addition, the word assent, A-S-S-E-N-T. The etymology is saying this is from the Middle English, uh, Anglo-French, agreer, A-G-R-E-E-R, uh, which is from a and gray, G-R-E, which means at will, and I guess gray means will or pleasure. Uh, it's also from gratis, which means pleasing and agreeable, and there's more at the word grace. 
All right, next is agreeable. This is an adjective from the 14th century. One, pleasing to the mind or senses, especially as according well with one's tastes or needs, as in an agreeable companion or an agreeable change. Two, ready or willing to agree or consent. Three, being in harmony. Synonym is consonant. Agreeability is a noun. Agreeableness is also a noun, and agreeably is an adverb. All right, I have adjusted my position and also the position of the microphone because my butt was hurting, and I'll probably have to do this multiple times while I'm sitting here. Okay, next word is agreement. This is a noun from the 14th century. 1a, harmony of opinion, action, or character. Synonym is concord, C-O-N-C-O-R-D. 1b, the act or fact of agreeing. 2a, an arrangement as to a course of action. 2b, just has the synonyms compact and treaty. 3a, a contract duly executed and legally binding. 3b, the language or instrument embodying such a contract. Next, we have agribusiness, A-G-R-I, then the word business, all one word. It's business time. This is a noun, circa 1955. An industry engaged in the producing operations of a farm, the manufacture and distribution of the farm equipment and supplies, and the processing, storage, and distribution of farm commodities. Next, we have agribusinessman. This is a noun from 1958, a person who works in or manages an agribusiness. Next, we have agricultural. This is an adjective from 1776 of relating to, used in, or concerned with agriculture. Agriculturally is an adverb. Now we have agriculture. This is a noun from the 15th century. The science, art, or practice of cultivating the soil, producing crops, and raising livestock, and in varying degrees, the preparation and marketing of the resulting products. Synonym is farming. Agriculturalist is a noun. The etymology says this is from the Latin agricultura, which is from ager, A-G-E-R, which means field, plus cultura, which means cultivation. And there's more at the words acre and culture. And because we are about halfway down the column, we will say that that is the last word for this episode. Thank you for listening. 100 episodes in, tens of thousands to go probably, and many, many years. And again, I hope you consider doing whatever you can uh, to halt climate change. We know it has been uh, caused by humans. And one way that you can do that is to eat less meat and dairy. Thank you for listening to my preachiness, um, but I know that it will work. All right, we'll end the episode now. Thank you and goodbye.